The kangaroo, that spring-heeled Australian icon, propelling its way across spinifex-dotted deserts using those incredibly powerful hind legs. But not this kangaroo, who is more at home off the ground, up in the rainforest canopies of Papua New Guinea. Now these guys uh, like kangaroos, so they're still designed like them, so they'll actually hop, but more or less in a tree. So unlike, say, your primates that will jump from tree to tree, these guys can't do it, so they have to climb and jump. And they've also got incredibly long claws, and they're designed for great grip for climbing up the trees. Their tail's designed more for balance. It's quite thick and strong. You'll notice it actually isn't designed to grip hold of any branches. It's more or less a keep them upright. Very powerful tail. The whole package is covered in a boldly coloured coat that is thick, not so much for warmth, but to stay dry. Because they are found in a climate that's quite tropical, so they get a lot of rain. So it has to be waterproof. This one and its breeding partner live at the National Zoo and Aquarium in the Australian capital, Canberra. A much more reliable means for animal lovers to actually see a good fellow's tree kangaroo in the flesh. In the wild, they are a secretive animal that is rarely seen. Uh, luckily here at our zoo, we've got Kaboo, who's quite friendly. So he'll come down, he loves the attention, and he also loves to get a few pats and a few um, scratches under the belly. Which is very much against type. These tree kangaroos are so committed to the solo life that they don't even hang out together. Tree kangaroos aren't social at all. They're naturally a solitary species, only really coming together for breeding. One, they will have their own territories, and most males and female territories will actually overlap. And that's how they come in contact with each other. It's quite a challenge for a species to maintain a viable population when spending time together seems to be quite low on a tree kangaroo's priority list but Brendan and his colleagues have been playing Cupid recently, and they might just have succeeded. Her name is Umak. We recently put them in together, so we think she has got a joey. We'll find out in the next couple of months. So if she does have a joey, it's actually the size of a jelly bean at the moment, so it's very tiny. Yes, these are exciting times, not just for these potential parents, but for the team who takes care of them. They know us pretty well. They do have their own individual personalities. So our boy will come down. He's very friendly, very outgoing and very curious. While our girl, she's a little bit more shy, and she also a bit more moody. She has her cranky days, which is OK. I have my cranky days too. So we give these guys fruit, vegetables, but also their main diet consists of leafy greens and branches that we cut from the wild. But their favourite is scrambled eggs and avocado. An extraordinary gourmet diet, perhaps. But in Brendan's opinion, these two are no ordinary kangaroos. Incredibly agile, beautiful animals. Unfortunately, in Australia, we've only got two species left, and they are um, classified vulnerable, while the ones in Papua New Guinea are highly endangered. So quite a unique animal that is disappearing quite fast.